Well, last night we exclusively revealed that legendary US ambassador to Australia, Caroline Kennedy, is dividing her time between Australia and the US, unlike her predecessors. She's spending more time in the States than any previous ambassadors, with critics saying she's hard to find and her absence has been noticed in political and national security circles. Well, tonight we can exclusively report that Caroline Kennedy is having far less face time with the Albanese government than she was used to during her posting in Japan. As ambassador to Japan, Kennedy had regular breakfasts and meals with the chief cabinet secretary. She also had regular calendarised meetings with the foreign ministry. I'm told that the ambassador hasn't had the same face time with the Albanese government or with foreign minister Penny Wong. Caroline Kennedy has had two formal one-on-one -on -one meetings with Penny Wong since her appointment 14 months ago. They had a bilateral meeting on the 27th of July 2022 and they had a pre-Osman meeting in mid-July 2023. On top of those four meetings, there were four other events that they attended together. So six events in total but just two one-on-one -on -one meetings between Foreign Minister Penny Wong and America's ambassador to Australia, Caroline Kennedy, since her appointment last July. There have also been other phone calls and text message conversations as well. In response to questions about the lack of FaceTime with the Albanese government compared with what Ambassador Kennedy was used to in Japan, where, as I said, she had regular diarised meetings with the foreign ministry, a spokeswoman for the US Embassy said that Ambassador Kennedy enjoys a close working relationship with her Australian government counterparts and she's had a number of warm and productive meetings with Prime Minister Albanese, Deputy Prime Minister Miles and Foreign Minister Wong during her time in Australia. And since we went to air last night, Caroline Kennedy attended the Earthshot Summit in New York alongside Prince William. Now, Strategic Analysis Australia Director Michael Shoebridge joins me now. Michael, thank you so much for your time. What is your view on our report that Ambassador Caroline Kennedy is pursuing a new model of ambassador where she's dividing her time between the United States and Australia? Well, Sherry, I saw your report. I don't think there's a problem with Caroline Kennedy travelling home occasionally, but I do think she's got a real job to do here, and that's a public job and it's a private job. She's got to be building working relationships with the government, with the parliament, and also talking to the Australian public. And frankly, she can't be doing that while she's in America. How much has her absence been noticed uh, in Canberra in national security and political circles? Well, I think she's just a far less active voice. Uh, we're used to having the American ambassador be a public voice, you know, speak and write publicly and seeing them engage politically. And right now there's real work to do. Uh, there's a bit of a complacent bubble in Australia around our alliance and around AUKUS. And she needs to use her star power to get our government really taking the hard decisions that they're putting off to future governments. So, well, what do you mean that, by that? that? What are the lack hard of decisions? Push is being noticed. Yeah. What well, are these hard decisions? On, on AUKUS, um, if we're going to have, we're, we're going to take control of these nuclear reactors from the submarines, we need a nuclear waste repository. That mm. needs a decision on where it's going to be. We need an East Coast base. We need to stop talking about money that gets spent decades from now and do the hard work to get this thing on the road. Now, just on another topic, uh, we've seen that both Albanese and Penny Wong have been asked questions today about Australia's relationship with India, about whether we've raised concerns with India amid escalating tensions over the reported assassination of prominent Sikh leader. Uh, here's what Penny Wong had to say very quickly. These are concerning uh, reports uh, and I note that investigations are still underway uh, but obviously uh, these are concerning reports and as I've said yeah, we, have, we are monitoring these developments closely with our partners uh, and will continue to do so. How concerning is this assassination and is Justin Trudeau justified in his response? 
Well, I think we've got to see a bit more evidence, but I don't think Justin Trudeau would have said what he said publicly without there being some pretty good grounds. I think the big problem for Australia is we get very romantic about our international relations. We saw that with China. We fell in love and it took us a while to see the ugly side of the Communist Party dictatorship. Narendra Modi's India is complicated. It's democratic. That's good. But it's in a Hindu nationalist government uh, which can be quite divisive and have some political violence. We've got to be clear-eyed about that. Mm. Now, just finally, Michael, there's reports in the Washington Post today that the Democratic Party is becoming increasingly anxious about Joe Biden. This after polls suggest voters are very worried about his age. Uh, and, of course, that's only linked to his performance. And this follows a fascinating piece by Cameron Stewart in The Australian on the weekend that was headlined, headlined Are We Past Joe Biden's Bedtime? What do you think this is heading towards? I mean, for the Washington Post, a left-leaning newspaper, uh, to carry these serious concerns by the Democratic Party, do you think they are now going to seriously start to look at another candidate? Well, Sherry, I think both parties have the same problem. Um, Trump and Biden will both be older than Ronald Reagan was when he finished his second term if they're elected uh, at, in the 2024 election. You know, 78 and 82. It really should be a time for younger candidates from both parties. Biden has been surrounded by capable professionals, but he's got to carry the debates by himself. And Trump's facing multiple criminal charges. The American public deserves better candidates.